And let's put our hands together and give the Lord some praise. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Want to welcome you here today to Pleasant Grove Western Church where the Word of God makes you and I a promise. Blessed are they that come hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. Yeah. So we pray that you came today with your cup turned up, ready to get it filled up. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're here in the Lord's house today? Amen. 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 You know, you, sometimes you, you see the gloomy weather on the outside and you let the gloomy come on on the inside. Amen. But we just got to sit here and pause a second. We had a great Sunday school lesson this morning. I'll try my best not to preach it. Amen. Because it's a, when you when you hear a good lesson and you you apply it to your life. And you, you sit there and you say, man, I could preach that. I could preach that. You know, it's a, because it's all, all God's word is good. And you hear the wisdom of, of uh, the teacher as he teaches and or she teaches, whoever's teaching at that time. And you say, you know, that's. Uh, everybody needs to hear that, and and, uh, and you you sit there, Lord, how, how can I adjust that just to that in my own life? And I think of uh, especially that car scenario. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you guys know for the last year I've been working on my car, and uh, I didn't go get it painted or put new tires on it. <laughs> Amen. But I, I was sitting there thinking, you know, man is a. Uh, you can just sort of now I'm ready to go paint it after the car's running good. You know, it's like, hey, I believe I'll get a hundred thousand more miles out of this car. Now it might be worth a paint job. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, but it's great, great, uh, great illustrations and great lesson today in the Sunday school lesson. We pray that, um, those that may be watching on social media is uh, that you'll be able to tune in. We we post the Sunday school on our YouTube channel. And so make sure you go back, if you don't uh, have a chance to come to Sunday School, go back to watch our YouTube channel, Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church, Pastor Jeff Johnson, and you'll, you'll find our Sunday School and then our preaching services also posted there, as well as on our, on our Facebook. But God is an awesome God. Yeah, yeah. Amen. We can sort of see that the, uh, we got some people traveling today or some people not able to get out in this weather. And so we want to keep them uh, lifted up in prayer today. But we'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. If you've got prayer requests. Amen, Brother Michael, what they were asked about. I would like to keep my grandson in prayer. He um, was in a tournament yesterday, a wrestling tournament. And he got his name poor Mama Matt. She hit his head and he just uh, went to the hospital, but they uh, couldn't find anything. He just has a concussion. But this is so sad. Just keep it for him on there. Okay. Dennis Grayson. Grayson. I pray nobody else hits my car. <laughs> I'm trying to get one thing fixed. And... <laughs> That's your car. Well, the good thing... Uh, nobody got hurt. That's right. you know, Amen. Amen. We, we think of that, and, and we don't want really to get too much in preaching service on this, but we, we can look and see that uh, monetary things, sometimes that affects us, you know, when we look at things like that, but then we, we start thinking, say, well, nobody got hurt, and it could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, you know, whenever you think of losing, losing something material, doesn't really seem that bad until you see somebody that lost something that was dear to their heart, a loved one. And so, let's keep, uh, we'll pray for that. We'll pray for a protecting hand around all those here at the church. Amen. But I'm glad that the Lord kept you safe. And uh, any other prayer requests? Keep Eugene in your prayer. Keep Irene in your prayer. She's traveling as well as Daniel and his family. Uh, still keeping his wife Sharice in prayer. She she's back home, back to work. But they, you know, her father had passed away, and uh, keeping Daniel for the recovery of his hand. He's still uh, his wrist. He's still anxious to to play. 
uh, get back to his music. <clears throat> Let's keep uh, Israel in prayer. Yeah. Which reminds me, I seen this a while ago when I was sitting down. That eagle faces forward, not to the back. Oh. <laughs> okay. We'll fix this one too. Sometimes when we shift from it, you just don't pay attention. And I, I just happened to be back there watching. I said, you got to fix that flag when I get up there. <laughs> Amen. So back to praying for our country. Uh, let's, let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Turn your thing right to it up there. Your flag on your church. Give it a twirl. Give it a twirl. There you go, right there. <laughs> yeah. Work yourself upside down. We're not in distress today. <laughs> no flag, United States flag upside down means you're in distress. We're not in distress. <laughs> we're in we're in the church. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're not in distress, we're in the church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna stop laughing out. I'm kidding. I'm one of the dad jokes, I guess. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, perhaps we got loved ones that are sick, lost. We all have something. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, the opportunity to call upon your name. Lord, we know that many, Father, have prayer requests. Many have their lost loved ones. Uh, many have had sick uh, come across their mind today. And, and even Miss Sharon mentioned about the the co-worker that passed away and, and their family. We lift them up before you, Lord. Uh, it seems like every week, which is what the church is here for, we lift up those that, uh, the families of those that have passed away. <clears throat> Father God, that you would give them comfort in these di uh, difficult times. Uh, Father God, and most of all, Lord, if there's somebody in that family, Lord, that don't know you as their Savior, uh, Lord, that you would touch, touch their heart, that they would come and accept you as their Lord and Savior. The same with today, Lord, is somebody here present here in the church and those that watch on social media don't understand about salvation and don't know who you are. We pray, Father God, that you would use our church here at Pleasant Grove Western Church to be a light, to be something that, that would lead others to Jesus Christ. We pray, Father God, for these that was lifted up and were sick. Father God, Brother Eugene, we know uh, Willie oftentimes lifted up a, a personal request with him and Sylvia. Father God, and we pray, Father God, for Brother Jimmy today, Lord. We know, Father God, that he's been uh, battling some different uh, sicknesses with this fluid. And we just ask you, God, that you just as, as, uh, thank you that he's able to be here with us today, that you just touch and bless him and Barbara. Father God, and give the doctors the understanding and wisdom. And, and, uh, and a lot of these people, Lord, that's here today that, that have been going to the doctors, we'd ask you, Lord, that you touch the doctors and you give them that wisdom. And you would touch their bodies, that Lord God, that they would be able to recuperate and get strong and be able to get in the house of God to praise and worship you. We pray for my wife as she's traveling, Lord, that she can be an example to others that while she's there in Texas, that you'll give her a safe traveling trip back home uh, tomorrow, Lord. We pray, Father God, for the remainder of this service, that everything we say and do will glorify you. Father God, each one that has raised their hands, Lord, you know that they have things that come into hearts and minds throughout the day. And we pray for your guidance and your protection upon each one. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A quick reminder, we was going to have our superintendent <coughs> going to preach the end of this month. And he let me know that they had a, another church uh, situation that they, they, he had to go handle some deal, dealings with a pastor that I think the way he described it, they don't have a pastor. He's got to help them select something and and do something, amen? And uh, so he's rescheduled, and I, I put him down on the calendar for May the 19th. So try to be here May the 19th, and uh, until then, you'll, you'll get some good preaching, and then you'll get some good preaching on May the 19th also. Amen? amen. Coming into God's house, amen? So always make that a plan. So what's on the schedule? Being in God's house. <coughs> so we have Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock, then here's, uh, 10 o'clock Sunday school, 11 o'clock worship hour, 
And that's the, that's the time we try to get started. It don't always happen like that. So if you're five minutes late, come on in anyway. Amen. 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 I'm sure our door greeter will greet you, and he'll let everybody know you're here. Amen. Amen. And uh, but we're we're anxious to to see the church grow. Amen. Amen. We're about we're about ready to pray. You guys got to get stirred up a little bit, so uh, everybody be falling asleep. I'll make sure you don't fall asleep here in a minute. <laughs> Might bang on something hard and jump. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, put your hands together one more time and get a little surprise. I think I've addressed everything. You ready to get started with some music? Yep. <clears throat> Would I have to please stand, get your handle, turn the page 10. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord. We thank you for this good day. We thank you for the rain that you sent, Lord. And we thank you for the sunshine that's come out of us, Lord. Just be with us, guide us. Lord, bless this tithe and offering. Use for it, lift your kingdom and spread your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. amen, it's great to be in the Lord's house. We want to rejoice for the steps of a righteous man that ordered by the Lord. Amen. You may have a, a copy of this on your pew. You don't have a copy of this? Mm -hmm. Up to the front, it should look like that. Okay. You don't jump in there and follow along. Rejoice for the
Amen. What a great day it is to be in the house of God, to serve Amen. a mighty God. And we serve a mighty God. Amen. 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 We're thankful to be in the Lord's house that we can come and worship Him in spirit and in truth. you got to, you got to keep stirring it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You gotta keep stirring until you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You gotta keep moving until you say, I'm, I'm getting there. Amen. You know, you don't just settle. You listen to me, church? You don't just settle for whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. You get out of life what you put into it. Amen. 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 If you wanna have a miserable life, then just sit there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you never wanna have any success, any victory in your life, at your home, in your marriage, in your school, Sit there. Don't do anything. But if you want to see your church grow, if you want to see your family grow, if you want to see your bank account grow, you know, if you want to see your health grow, you got to get it stirred up. You got to get the moving about something. And the more you sit still, the more it gets stagnant. Amen? Who's heard about the Dead Sea? Who can tell me why they call it the Dead Sea? Because it's full of salt. We're selling them tomorrow. Where else? Our dance. <laughs> There's no movement of the water. The water just stays there. Stagnant. It gets stagnant. Amen. There's no flow. There's no movement. And you gotta have the flow. And, and I'm talking about church today. Amen. Because you, you can't just uh, come into church and, and just say, "Okay, I'm gonna be happy. I, I don't know if I need this today. I, I might want to be a little loud." And I don't think this is. Got this all wrapped around me. <laughs> you might want to be a little excited, a little excited today, and I can't get too excited when I got a microphone right at my mouth. I'm trying, I'm trying something a little different. Make sure my flags ain't upside down. I ain't in distress. I'm in the church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm happy to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. I ask if you would. I, I got a few verses of scripture. I ask if you would open your Bibles first to Philippians chapter four. That's right after Ephesians, but Philippians chapter 4. All of God's word is good. Philippians chapter 4 has a lot of good information in it, but I've got a different twist on it for, you for today. But I want to read it. Our topic is going to be out of verse number 3. If you'll scroll down and find your verse number 3 and follow along with me. As I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help thee those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading and hearing of your word today. We pray, God, that you would help us to honor and serve you. May you give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the church today. Help us, Lord, to follow your direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We've had a, a great series of services lately. Amen. Amen. And Wednesday night, we was able to start talking about the oneness of God and, and really finding a unity that God's got in store. Now, here this opening scripture was talking about their names being in the book of life. So without you really raising your hand, which one of you can you say, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life? Amen? Because it's, it's important that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Who remembers the old song, When the Road is Caught Up Yonder? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, yeah. Now, that isn't even the, in today's language, yonder. Amen. What is yonder? Amen. <laughs> over yonder. Now, us over here in Siler City, we know what yonder is. But, you know, you go up to New York or, or, or Rhode Island, 
Miss Millie says, I don't know what a yonder is. <laughs> I do, but my family don't. <laughs> well, she had to learn it. She learned what yonder was when she came down south. But she goes home and they don't know what yonder is. But you and I know what yonder is. And over yonder is where, where we really want our name in the book. Because there's going to come a time whenever God is going to do a roll call. Amen. You know, I don't even know if they do a roll call in, in schools anymore. I know they mark the absent if you're not there, but I don't know if they actually call your names out. Our, our students, do they still call your names out? Jeff, do they call your names out or do they just know the class students? Sometimes, this depends on the class. But they, they call your name out, they expect you to respond. In the same way as in the military. Military, they expect you, you to respond when they call out your name. We heard some great stuff, and I don't want to get too off track, but it was i got to bring some of it in. I'm talking about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And whenever we was hearing that in Sunday school, I was thinking about whenever I was in the Marine Corps. Some people are like, you know, they say, he don't just say Marines, he always got to say Marine Corps. Marine Corps! You know, <laughs> They don't say, I was in the Marines. I was in the Marine Corps. Hoorah. <laughs> yeah, that's like, hoorah. There you go. <laughs> Why? Because they, they sort of instill that in you. You know, you got you to gotta have it deep and rooted in you. And you, you give the full name. You know, what's your name? I'm Jeff Johnson. You know, the, <laughs> I was in the Marine Corps. I, mean, I was in the Marine Corps. But we, when I worked on airplanes, I worked on the avionics system, the electronic system on the airplane. And... I want you to understand this is that you go to school for that. Amen. They send you to school and they're expecting you to not necessarily fix everything, but be able to find it in the book. Right? And so every time you would work on something, you better have a book. They didn't want you working on something by memory or because your memory can fail you. You got thousands of wires on an airplane. And you better make sure if you're doing a wire repair, you looked it up in the wiring diagram that you pulled the right wire and you're repairing and testing the right wire. But sometimes you would work on something and you would follow directions in the book and it still didn't fix it. So what would you do? Well, because how many of you fly? You better hope you know how people work on your airplane that you're flying in, Right? <laughs> I don't have a problem flying, but at the same time, I know what goes in. I'm like, I'm looking around for the mechanics that, what they look like working on this airplane. <laughs> but sometimes what you see in the book, in the, they call it a publication, they, or pubs. We should, we'd always act with them. You know, military, in Marine Corps, everything was abbreviated. So you had to have your pub with you. That's a publication. And then you had your wire, WRM, wire repair manual. Whatever the WDM, duck wiring diagram manual. So how do you know all that? Because I instructed it for a couple years, you know. So, I, so you get all them acronyms instilled in you. Uh, but you, you, you have certain things that wouldn't be followed, but you say, okay, I, I've troubleshot this system, I've troubleshot this system. Your experience in that begins to say, okay, let me bring some wisdom in here. I had a chance to work, they called it RWR, radar warning system, on the back of a Harrier aircraft. It's not really top secret anymore because they don't fly on it. But on the back of the aircraft, they had these two little bubbles. They're like little antennas. They're a radar warning system. What that did is let them know somebody's coming up from the back. And that little thing, it was sort of like, you know, it's almost like your backup cameras. We didn't have backup cameras on the, on the Harrier jet. And then because we didn't go backwards, we went, well, let me take that back. A Harrier could go backwards, forward, turn around, stop in the middle. And that's what was cool about Harriers if you didn't know what a Harrier was. And, and I had a chance to work on it at 19. Whenever I get discouraged, I thought, how many 19-year-olds are working on a Harrier jet? Not too many. Yeah. But yeah, I had a chance to work on that. They had, a, uh, they had been working on this particular problem for a long time. Well, by this time, I'm in my mid-30s working on this particular system. Well, I'd gotten out of the Marine Corps the first time, went back into the Marine Corps, couldn't get enough. Rough, tough, can't get enough. You know, I say Marine Corps, hoorah, right? <laughs> Had to get some more of the Marine Corps. That's what we called it, Marine Corps. <laughs> right? 
So I had to get some more of that. But I'm working, but by this time I've got my electrical license, I've done a lot of wire repairs, I've got a lot more knowledge when it comes time to work on things electrical. Big thing of all that to say this, because of that experience, you went by the publication, but not a lot of people had experience. So of course I didn't have the experience on that particular topic, <coughs> but I had wiring experience. And was able to Got a big award and all that thing, but was able to fix this airplane that had been a problem for a long time. Not to say anything with me, but it's a, applying that wisdom. The Word of God has a lot of instructions. We've got some things in here that says, whatever you ask in Jesus' name, it shall be done. Mm -hmm. Some things in the Word of God talks about if I uh, that God will heal the sick. We hear that a lot, don't we? Because I preach that God's a healer. But what happens, Pastor Jeff, if I've come to that altar and ask you to pray for me and I'm still sick? Well, we read the Bible. We read the manual. We followed the directions. I examined myself. I anointed you with oil. I followed the dots. I, I dotted the dots and I crossed the T's. You've examined your life. Is there any sin in my life? Have I repented of my sin? Is everything is everything clean and clear between me and the Lord? We say yes. Say, well, why am I still sick? Because we often say, well, I'm following the directions. There's a publication. Wisdom has to start being applied when you're not getting the direct answer that you think you're going to get when you read the manual, which is the Word of God. And it takes experience in life to realize you don't always get what you want. Right? You say, well, preacher, it ain't because I want it. I need it. I need healing. Amen? And God knows what you need. God knows the, the, the healing you need. God knew whenever I was working on this car that I really needed to replace the catalytic converter but I was trying to do everything else before that. <laughs> Why? I didn't have a car lift. I was doing everything I could reach. Well, this sensor says it gives those symptoms. <laughs> you know, this. All these things that give those symptoms. Uh, but it finally I came across the right thing. Then Willie, he said, I like the catalytic converter to be some man down here in Siler City. I hadn't even listened to my car. <laughs> Amen. I was sort of thinking that, but it sort of gave me the encouragement. So I'm going to cut that thing off and see what happens. Yeah. Ended up cutting it off, poured a bunch of junk out of it. It was clogged up. Put it back together. Thing ran like it's a brand new car. Ordered a new one. They meant to replace that, uh, replace that catalytic converter. Driving it today, I said, I believe I'll get another 100,000 miles on that. A great the topic about Sunday school about the man's car not running good. He painted it, shined it up, put new tires on it, put new stereo system, and still didn't run good. Amen? It's like the car not running good, change the air in the tires. Maybe that'll help. But that's what it made me think about. Dad used to tell me stuff like that. You know, well, change the air. Have you checked the air? What about the air in the tires? You know, we, what's that got to do with my transmission not sounding like it? I thought I had transmission troubles. Amen? I'm no mechanic. This car wasn't really the value to take it to the master mechanic like we mentioned in Sunday school. Like, I don't know. I had it at a mechanic. The mechanic says, time for you to get another car. <laughs> Amen? It's like when the doctor tells you, he said, well, you need this. Uh, one doctor told me to lose weight. I said, I went to another doctor. <laughs> you know, you, you get to the point that you don't you don't know what uh, what you really stand in need of. You, we trust and we pray for doctors to have that wisdom. Amen. Amen? And some of you are going to the doctor and you've got some serious things going on. So what will we do as a church? We're going to pray for you. Amen? Amen? Because God has a prayer. It may not. I didn't want to drive that car a year and a half the way I drove it. Uh, but it, it kept getting me here to church. But finally, the answer came. I didn't give up on it. I didn't just throw it away and say, well, I'm going to go get another car. 
I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> right? How many of you say, this hurts so bad if I just cut it off, they give me another one? <laughs> you might think that about your, a bad knee. Well, if I, what if I just cut it off? If that thing wouldn't hurt no more, and then just put me an artificial one up in there. You ever think of that? I know some of you have aches and pains, and you say, oh, man. Dad, is, I remember him having a ruptured disc, and they took a disc out in the back. And, uh, and sometimes that helps, but he's had back problems since he was in the Army. You know, some of you, a lot of you have mentioned about having back issues. But we think of different things that could be affected in, that's affecting our health. <clears throat> so if I just cut it off, it'd be all right. Amen. I hope you don't have a headache. <laughs> we get our brain surgeon, Greg, to come help you out. Amen. If you want to know what some of this means, come to Sunday school. Greg's got some good stuff he talks about. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's got skills that we didn't know he had. <laughs> but I'm getting to this part about the name being in the book because there's a book. One book is these, well, one of these 66 books that we preach out of. Amen. And, and, and some say that there's been, there was more books and more manuscripts. But this is the book I've got. This is the book we preach out of here at the church. Amen. Amen. It's what you've been given over the last few generations that you think you're supposed to have faith in what's written in this book. And by having faith what is written in this book, then your name is written in another book. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not going to get to the part over there in, in Revelation 21 and 22 talk about certain people getting their names removed out of the book. Because I pray none of you have that situation that, that you have to question that if your name has been removed. Because I want to tell you, once you've made a commitment to serve God, you should stick with that commitment to serve God. Amen? You should say, I don't, I don't want to... Uh, if you start questioning that, it's almost wondering if you're standing on the, on, the, on the fence post or trying to walk the fence. They call it straddling the fence. You know, I'm, I'm trying to walk so close to it, to doing what I want to do in this world and then doing the things of this, what God wants me to do, that I have to ask the preacher if it's okay for, if I do it. Well, preacher, what do you think about drinking? What do you think about smoking? What do you think about watching R-rated movies? What do you think about going here or going there and doing this and doing that? <laughs> Read the manual. Amen. Read the book. Don't get lazy and just want to get my opinion. You know what happens? I give my opinion and people say, I'm going to go find another preacher. <laughs> I don't like that preacher. He wants me to live a holy life. He said I couldn't do that. And that other preacher said I could. I like that other preacher a little bit more. <laughs> it's like the doctor that said you could have eggs. You know, one doctor said you couldn't have eggs. Another doctor said you could have eggs. One said you could have coffee. The other one said it's okay to have coffee. Just don't put anything in it. I was gaining weight, and the doctor said, I, he said, what do you do different? I said, I drink a lot of coffee. He said, well, the coffee isn't what hurt me. It's that, it's that hazelnut you're putting in there. <laughs> <laughs> and all the sugar, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the six donuts that I dipped in. <laughs> I, I didn't mention that part to him. They're good, too. What, what do you, what do you try to drink a glass of milk each night? And a bag of Oreos. <laughs> you don't always the, the whole truth. See, you gotta have the whole truth in there to get the full diagnosis of, really, of what's really causing the problem. Amen. Amen. I'm getting to the part, and what I thought I was going to get to was was talk about church membership, because I really don't see a lot in the Bible that really addresses directly <laughs> church membership. But I want to tell you something. What's important about a church <laughs> membership? The Bible does talk about it in the book of Acts chapter 2 when it says how they added to the church daily when the movement of the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. Amen. The people was filled with the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then God poured out His Spirit and, and the people was uh, given different gifts in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then later on people found that they needed to be uh, displaying the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But as they did, they found one group and they gathered together and they would hang out. 
Unless you, just for illustration purposes, when they come to a good church like Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church where they heard the uncontaminated preaching of God's Word. That sometimes the Word of God steps on your toes and says, hey, you got to get this straightened out or you're going to die and go to hell. Or perhaps it's, you need to get this straightened out or your health isn't going to be where it should be. Your blessings aren't going to be where they should be. Some preachers, are, and we have it, and it's true to an extent that all sin don't send you to hell. After you've repented. Follow with me. Amen? Some sin, some sin in your life that you do after you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, it just starts to make you slide backwards. They call it backsliding. And God's grace, I don't, I can't tell you how big God's grace is. It's bigger than what I am. But God's got that gap in short. It's called grace. For example, if you if you sit here and you you start complaining about the way I'm preaching here today, well, first of all, you gotta be careful how you speak anything negative to somebody preaching God's word. Not just your pastor, but anybody that's preaching God's word. Amen. Any church. I'm trying to be careful not to speak anything bad about any church. Amen. Any preacher, God's got that preacher to preach a certain way, and, and if they're following the Word of God, they've got me preaching the way I preach. But I, so I don't want to put down any other preacher. And you've got to be careful how you do that. But if you're putting down the preacher, and, and you walk out that door, and you trip on those steps, and you fall and break your neck. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not speaking that to anybody, but, so don't, but don't be talking about me. Right? <laughs> But there's grace if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and you say, well, I don't know about the way that preacher's preaching. We just voted him in permanent. What do we do? Right? <laughs> and you fall down and you break your neck and you go before God. What's going to happen? Preacher done it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> preacher spoke a curse on me. God's going to say, well, you shouldn't have been talking bad about him. It's not, I'm just, Lord, forgive me. But look, this is what I'm trying to get at. I, don't, I can't tell you how much you can do and get away with. The Bible says there's a sin unto death and there's a sin not unto death. But when you're trying to figure out the sin that's not unto death, you're trying to straddle the fence. You're trying to do things that you, you're trying to find a reason and the, the permission slip to let you do it. It's like kids that they're found in the hallway, they're supposed to have a hall pass. If you don't have a hall pass and you're warned in the halls, we call it in the, in the, in the Marine Corps, we call it AWOL, absent without leave. Well, you, where was you supposed to be? I was supposed to be at Cherry Point. I was supposed to be in Yuma, Arizona, Marine Corps Air Station. Marine Corps Air Station, right? So we get to that part and we say, well, what are you doing a thousand miles away from Yuma, or two thousand miles away from Yuma, which is about how far North Carolina is away from Yuma. That's a long way. But you sit here and say, uh, well, if I'd have been over here without proper permission, that was a wall. Amen. Actually, without leave. But we sort of we want to play the game. People want to play the game in church. They want to play that game because they don't want to be committed to the church. Well, if I never join a church because I haven't seen it in the Bible that you're supposed to be uh, that you have to have a joint or you have to join the church. Have any of you ever read it? You got to join the church. But the Bible says that the Bible, the Bible teaches about you create standards from the Word of God. And the Wesleyan has standards. Amen. Everything that's in our standards and our discipline is it, driven by the Word of God, but it might not be spelled out exactly that in the Word of God. Amen. If we talk about, uh, well. If we talk about drinking, and, and we like we heard in Sunday school, that if we saying that we don't want you to drink, amen, in the Wesleyan church, why don't we want you to drink? Because you might meet a Baptist. <laughs> no, forgive me, Lord. I guess. No, because you could lead somebody else. You could be a hindrance to somebody else. Amen. We just heard this thing about the online gambling. You got to be listening to that on the radio. We did the same commercial. It says, and if you got a gambling problem, yeah. <laughs> well, that had to be part of their advertisement because that was their their deal. 
I want to know where all the educational funds that were supposed to be going to this from having North Carolina gambling to start with. But if you got a gambling problem, right? So it gets to this, creating standards. We're going to plant a little seed in your heart before, and we're going to have a special uh, anointing service here today. For those of you that are sick, we want to uh, call the elders on the church. We want to anoint you with oil. Amen? Amen. But I want to talk to you about that commitment that, I was, that I'm was that i getting into. One thing, I, I preached a sermon many years ago, and I, now don't you guys get mad and run off after I say this, <laughs> but I, I call it church fornication. And we know what fornication is. Fornication is having marital relations without being married. I mean, keeping it, keeping it simple like that. There's a lot of sin in the Bible. That's just one of them. Right? But I was bringing up church fornication. See, some people want the benefits of getting married without getting married. They want to take that car for a spin. Will the tire spin right? How good is the radio? <laughs> well, if you don't, if she ain't too loud, if she ain't too loud and running the mouth too much, it's going to be a pretty good car. <laughs> Can I turn her volume down? Right. But people say that they, they want to have things without that commitment. Now, people want to come to church without having a commitment to the church. Why does the church need your commitment? And why do you need to be committed to a church? For church membership. I want you to see it and understand it in on the spiritual side of it. Because the Bible really doesn't address it directly. The Bible talks about forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. But I could assemble myself with somebody else. I could assemble myself with the local bar. And there might be a, a barroom preacher that comes in. I know one. That's his ministry. He goes to bars and... He hands out these little crosses and he tells them about Jesus. If you ever follow on Facebook, you ever follow mine, his nickname is Bones. Sometimes he watches, sometimes he, he might just click he likes the video and keeps on like most people does, right? But he, he his name is Bones. He's a motorcycle man. He's had a, 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 a rough past, but for the last 25 years he's been serving God. Amen? Amen? Still got his long hair, his long beard, white-headed, Vietnam veteran. Uh, he, he, he's a, he wasn't in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Amen. But he's a pretty good guy. But what is church, why do we want to promote church membership? I want to sort of round it up like this. You've got to have that <laughs> unity. The Bible teaches about being unit, being one in the church. We talked about one being one God, but God wants you to be one body in Christ. And that means being one, that means you become like-minded. Being like-minded, you start hearing the same teaching and the same preaching. I can about guarantee there's no other preacher preaching the way I preach. Amen? Why? Because I don't, I don't preach like anybody else. I don't want to preach like anybody else. I want to preach the way Jeff preaches. I don't want to preach what everybody has been taught. I don't want to, be pre I want to preach what I've learned. Not necessarily what I was taught. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that knowledge and wisdom. I want to preach what I've been, what I've learned. Now, some of what I've learned is what I was taught, and some of it is what I had to learn to teach myself as I got in God's Word. So, why does why do we want you to be a member of Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church? I didn't know we didn't have that many members. Sunday, whenever they voted on me, we had 13 members that voted and 16 members that didn't, that were not members. So that told me, hey, I can preach something about membership a little bit and promote that a little bit because it's important that you find something. By being a member, you, you find yourself almost like being married. Right? When the husband and wife get married, they get married no matter how, through, through, through good times and bad times, through sickness and in health. Till death do you part. Right? It's not until she she gets a little gains a little weight or, or he loses his hair. Then I'm gonna find one that's got better hair or, or a smaller waistline. Right? That's not the way it goes. But so it gets to, to God's house. You don't just run off 
because the preacher starts doing social media. You don't just run off because the preacher added two speakers or he changed the lights. You don't start just run off because the piano player played the same song every Sunday. She don't. But I'm just talking, I'm giving an example. If you don't like the way the music is, you get up here and try it. That's right. Amen. Jeffrey came and played with me yesterday, and he's trying to play, and I set him up a microphone, and he's like, I didn't know how hard it was to try to sing and play at the same time. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier. I was sitting over there because I forgot the guitar. Right? I had to, I brought these speakers. I forgot the guitar, so I said, "Well, I'll try to play the piano and see, so he can work on the bass." So we brought brought another bass app. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so we brought up another bass app because it had more boom. But I tell you what, it, this thing you'd have thought you was at the Mexican dance last yesterday <laughs> if you drove by. That sign was vibrating out at the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you you don't complain if you. You, you want to see how hard it is for, for Katie to play the drums. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's, it's a whole huge thing when you're learning and you're reading music, but trying to play on the fly the way I just start grabbing. Hey, in the key of G. You know? And I sit here and she was here the other day. I'm, I'm back to bounce my foot and say, make a rhythm with that somehow. I was like, how do you make a rhythm with that? Well, she'll get there. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. She'll get there. She'll get to where she'll just... Uh, she'll be... I, <laughs> By the way, I got you a new stool. I got you a real stool. You got a you got a drum stool up here. You ain't got to sit on the bench. Right? Make it. You, that makes a difference. You try to sit on a chair and play the drums, or on the stool. You gotta have the right atmosphere. You gotta be able to set it up right. But people complain. I don't want it, like it done like that. Now let me get back to the unity of the church. You come and you have to hear a common message in a common direction. You start church hopping. Some people, they call that, uh, they, they, you ever heard the term bar hopping? Yeah. You better not hear that term. <laughs> Judy said, yeah, I know what bar hopping is. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know what bar hopping is. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I bet you Junior does. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Junior. I love you. I love you, too, brother. You've never been to one. <laughs> I have too in my younger days. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you what, what I, I I'm having a lot more fun here in the house of God than I ever did in any bar. Amen. Me too. <laughs> One is because I'm not worried about where I'm going when I leave here. Amen. I'm not worried about which way I'm headed after I preach God's word, after I listen to God's word, after I hear God's word. If the if the if I've ever set it's been a long time since I sat there and to just sit under a ministry because I've been preaching a while. Amen? But whenever I sit there, if I hear the word of God, if it, if it, it I try to hide my toes because it hurts a little bit, I say, I got to make a change. I got to make a difference. Amen? I want something different in my life. If I want something different, that means that I, if I want to be healthy, I'm going to, there's Dr. Jeff up there. Amen? <laughs> Dr. Pastor Philosopher Jeff, right? <laughs> that what does he say about health? First, follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. The instructions have, have a lot to do with health. Amen. Amen. If I want to lose weight, I can still drink coffee, just don't use all those donuts. <laughs> right? I can still have a I, I have I use a two percent milk. I got to where I like because we've had it for a long time. I just can't dip. 25 cookies. <laughs> Who likes to dip their cookies into milk? All right. <laughs> there you but you got to hold it just right. Yeah. You might have to give a lesson. But I ain't going to tempt you like that. <laughs> you hold it just, you get it there and it's just, just right. And you pull it up and it's just soft and absorb that, that, that milk just right. And you say, I'm going to do another. You hold it a little too long and it breaks off and it falls to the bottom of your glass. Does <laughs> that ever happen to any of you? Then you, then you either got to drink all the milk to get there or you get a spoon. Who's gotten a spoon before? <laughs> Y'all professional. <laughs> that wasn't even written in the book. And you figured it out. Yeah. Almost like that wisdom. Right? Yeah. You, it, didn't, it didn't tell you how to, 
how long to hold that cookie in there and it would still get the cookie. But when it broke off, I said, I'm not going to sell for that. Give me a spoon, honey. <laughs> right? But that by being a church member, you're saying I'm committed to that church. I want to stay uh, the direction and the flow of that church, the way it's going, I want to be part of that. It's not that you're going to be a part of it just sitting there on the pew. You want to be the growth. You want to be the, the anchor of that thing. You want to be in there where it says, uh, if that windshield wiper is doing like that, I want to be the arm that's moving that windshield wiper. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to jump on you just a minute. I started playing some music. The first thing Millie did, she got up. The rest of you just sat there. I had to tell the rest of you to stand up. <laughs> Amen? Now, I'm telling you this for a reason. Millie wants a blessing. Millie, Millie was determined that I want my husband healed. I want God to move in my half, in my home. I want God to, I want, I want to be close to God. And sometimes we get in God's house and we're waiting for that invitation of the pastor to say, get up and get up. And I'll do it, as you can tell, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thankful that all of you got up, the ones that could. Amen? Yeah. God knows if your health won't let you stand up or your back hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to do anything that's going to jeopardize that. Amen. If, you, if you're aching and painting and stuff like that, you sit there and let the Holy Spirit in the presence of his anointing be over you. Because that's what we preach here at Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. Amen. We preach that you come into that door, you come hungry and thirsty after righteousness, you're going to be filled. Amen. You may not, when you leave, <coughs> you're going to be different than when you came in. You still might have some of those issues. You still might have some aches and pains. But something improved from that time to this time. Because God's word does not return void. God's word will go out and do what God says it will do. And when we build up our faith to say whatever God's word says, it's going to happen. That means if I'm if I got this PA system right here, if I turn up the volume control, that means it's going to get louder. If it don't get louder, something's wrong with that button. Well, you do all that and say something that ain't working. Is it plugged in? Right? There's, there's going to be an answer. It's going to be some way to solve it, no matter what it goes. And God's given us that way to solve things. And the way we, to build the church. What, why do we want to build the church? Why do we want you to become members uh, of a Pleasure Grove Wesleyan Church? Well, in this particular case, having your name on the roll back there in the file cabinet may not seem that important. But what if the church really wanted to, what if we wanted to go get a loan? Let's go financial for a second. Well, how many church members you got? 13? But well, we got 60 that come to church. Well, how do you prove it? Take my word for it. No. I'm just saying because I've, I've talked to other pastors and they, they, they ask those questions. But well, financially is not the reason I want you to become a member of Pleasant Grove Western Church. It's that bond of commitment that you're going to say, we're going to be here and we're going to see the part of uh, to grow this church. I need to know I, I look at Brother Greg a lot because he's bigger than everybody back there. <laughs> but, but I know I can count on Brother Greg. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> and I know I, we're going to meet here if he's not stuck working. We're going to meet here. The yard looks great. I bet you cut it, didn't you? Who did the weed eating? Might as well raise your hand. But, but I know Junior, Junior's willing to help. Amen? I love Junior, but I was going to say, he'll help. Amen? But he'll, he's willing to help. Me. Give him a call. Now, the hard part is if he'll answer the phone. Now, that's, that's the tricky part I want. Amen? He actually stopped by. Gave him corners. He, he he told me about he told me about about you, him coming by and you was working, but he gets to this is that we want to set up our visitation program. But if I know that uh, if I got thirteen members, that means I can really count on thirteen, right? Of the health of those thirteen, maybe five of them could actually go and knock on doors. The other the other. 
eight could stay home and pray. Amen. Right? They could be praying while the others are out visiting. Amen. Amen. Well, why do we want church? Why do we want to see it? We want to make disciples. We want to make people the ability to go out and win, win others to Christ. Amen. Now, church, this is what's important. And, I, and the time has flown by because I've, I've got a lot to say in a short window to say it. Amen? Is that the difference, you may not understand because most of you, most of you are faithful here at Pledge Grove Wesleyan Church, but by bouncing from church to church, <clears throat> Your doctrine's going to get it all mixed up. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Because even though, even though I preach and, and I believe everything that's written in the Word of God, Amen. Amen? from the gifts of the Spirit to the fruit of the Spirit to God being able to do everything and anything in the Bible that He says He has done and will do, <clears throat> <coughs> that all things are possible. Amen. Even if I'm looking at you on deathbed, I'll pray for your healing. I'll pray for God's grace to give you grace if it's time for you to pass, but I'm going to pray for your healing. Amen? And I'm going to keep preaching God's word to you till it's, till it's time for you here or up there. Well, some preachers, they want to start making it, well, I'm not going to talk about healing because that one's sick. Amen? I'm not going to talk about speaking in tongues because they, half of that church don't believe speaking in tongues and this other half does. Amen? I'm not going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit because all these, they, they, they hop. The bar hop. <laughs> not the bunny hop. How many of you have done the bunny hop? <laughs> I just know how to do the pony. Dad taught me that one. <laughs> but but you, you get to the part of uh, being committed to your church. As your pastor, I have to evaluate your life. Amen? And guide messages accordingly. Sometimes they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's inspired by wisdom of a pastor. Amen? But if it's all word directed, it's all inspired by God. Would you agree? Yeah. So what I want you to start thinking about, we think about this fish fry. We're going to start talking about and start planting more seed because I got more than 13 here today. So that means that some of you are not members. Right? <laughs> so we're going to be pushing membership. Amen? Not pushing, but you know, we're going to be promoting yeah. membership. And along with the membership, we're going to be start talking about baptism. How many of you have been baptized? Everybody reach their hand, they say, I've been baptized. Well, this is what I, I said something to Junior about this the other day. Is that <clears throat> I want you to consider this about being baptized again. Amen. Now, now just, just keep it in the back of your mind. I'm not going to, uh, until I teach you on it, I don't want you to really understand. To say, yeah, I'm, I'm jumping all in. Or no, I don't, or turn me all off. Since the Lord's blessed and I'm now your permanent pastor, I want us to be unified. Does that make sense? Amen. I want to be the one that baptized you. I mean, yes, you've been baptized, but I want to be the one that baptized you. And it's going to bring, it's just going to bring the bond between us. And what I, what I was, when you said that thing about the fish fry, I said, what a great time to be able to just do a baptism and a fish fry. Oh, Amen. Just don't, bat, just don't fish fry the ones we pull up out of the water, right? <laughs> but one wanted you to consider that. Of, uh, if you've been baptized, uh, then I'd like you to still be considered or consider being rebaptized. But I'm going to teach you about all that on what the Word of God teaches about. So, how many got baptized real young? might not even knew what baptism meant. I got baptized the first time when I was 16. Amen? I got baptized the second time, ever how old I was in 2003. Amen? How, subtract how many years is that? That's 21 years ago? 
How old am I now? Yeah, I'm 59 now. 21, 30, 38, 37, 38. So, but it, it's like having a good cookie. <laughs> the more you dipped it in the milk, the better it was. Right? So it's not, so when you're considering this, was it hurt? Why do you need it? There's all things. If it doesn't hurt, if you don't know against it, I want, and I want you to be here when I'm teaching on it so you understand. <coughs> Unit, coming one, becoming one here in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? Starting to get involved. That's really what today's sermon, I know it didn't seem like I had a topic, but it's really about being one, one body in Christ. We talked about Wednesday night, God is one God, and I was going to share a scripture with you, just I got tied up on all the other stories about us becoming one as a body of Christ. Amen. The husband and wife, when you got married, you became one flesh. Amen. When you get married to God in the church, you become one body in the church. Now that's not saying that sometimes you don't go somewhere else. I like to visit. Amen. Amen. I promote visiting so you know how good a preacher you got. Amen. Amen. I like to pre. I like to visit so you can get other ideas. A, a guy showed me where he installed these lights in his church. I said, I like that. I think that would look good in our church. Amen. Amen. Anyway, we want to give you a chance to to come to this altar. I want to have the elders to come up. We're going to pray for our sick. If we've got some uh, sick that's willing to come up, let us anoint you with oil. The Bible says if there's any sick among you, call upon the elders of the church. That's in the book of James chapter 5. Amen? book of James chapter 5 says, You come up, we anoint you with oil. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen? You come up, the Bible says if you've committed any sin, you'll be forgiven. I don't forgive you, God forgives. Amen? God forgives as you repent. As you repent, God forgives. But we anoint you with oil. Oil, oil is, is a simulation of many things in the Word of God. The anointing oil represents the Holy Spirit as a covering over you and a protection over you. And it's symbolic. Amen? But I, call, I, I think there's power in anointing. I have, I have one that said not too much is happening with this oil, so I've done an oil change before. I ain't lying. Amen. I like that. I don't First thing I did when I got here, wasn't nothing wrong, probably wrong with oil, but I brought my own oil. I, I want some fresh. I knew what I, I knew I've been praying for this oil, right? And uh some, some some things I say and do are funny. It might be peculiar, but I have my reason for the madness a lot of times. So I'm gonna ask if if I could have my elders come up. You said who's an elder? How many of you are elders? Okay. How many believe that God is a healing God? How many of you believe that it's important for us to gather together and lay hands on the sick? Each one that is able to raise your hands, you might not be a documented elder in this church, but you're an elder in the body of Christ. You're a believer. If you don't believe, listen to this. If you don't believe, I'm not going to ask you to come up and lay hands on somebody that's sick. Until you know you believe. Why, why would I do that? If you don't believe, it could be that one of non-belief that robs the blessing, that robs the healing. Amen? So if, if you're here, if you're here and you'd like to be anointed with oil today, would you slip up your hand? Okay, so if you guys come on up forward, we're going to have our elders gather around you. Amen? So all of you, I want y'all, all, all of, I think it was like five of you said, raise your hand to be anointed with oil. I want you to come up. Then our elders are going to gather around you. And we're all going to anoint you with oil. Don't worry, you'll take a bath tonight. Y'all sort of make like a half moon around me. Then my elders are all going to get behind me. Okay. So 
Go back up just a little bit, brother. Really? You come up a little bit, brother Junior. Uh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. And all my elders, you guys gather around here behind. Now, did you you wanted to anoint yourself also? Well, we're here, so I can anoint you too. That's right. Okay. We got the whole glory. I got I got a whole bunch here. So I'm going to anoint my hands, and then I'm going to pass around. I'm we're going to ask God bless on this anointing oil. I believe that God's a, a God would have that they would bless the anointing oil. Now, what's special about this oil is. 100% virgin olive oil. You bought it at your family dollar or your Walmart. But what it is, it's been sanctified because it's dedicated unto the Lord. Just as you. Amen? When you dedicate yourself unto the Lord, that means you've been sanctified. So it's set aside for the part of anointing. Amen? For that purpose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to anoint myself and I'm going to pass this around because I want each one of you to get your squirt. Amen? And you pass around you sort of rub it in. There we go. Amen. And, and as, as you rub as you rub this in, then after it gets all the way back over here to Miss Doris, I'm not going to call her Miss Daisy today, but it gets over here to Miss Doris. That's okay. Uh, I'll be Miss Daisy. <laughs> when, it, by the, when it gets over here, we'll put that down. They're all going to sort of like lay hands on the one that's in front of them. Then I'm going to take turns laying my hands on each one of you here in the front. Okay. And I'm going to be praying for you. We're all going to be praying together. Amen. Amen. You know what this reminds me of? The scripture verse in Job when there's a hedge. There's a hedge around it. You know, now all you that are sick, y'all look around you, there's a hedge around you. You hear me with that? That's uh, God giving us in the spirit. He said, well, how do you get that? Look, I'll just, when I pray in the spirit, I pray to myself. But God gives us something when it's something for the church. Okay? And whenever I was praying in the Spirit just now, the Lord said, there's a hedge. Mm -hmm. There's a hedge right here. Who's got my back? The altar. <laughs> and that cross got my backside. You guys with me, church? Yep. So you're coming. You guys here, you're going to see something. Now, we've been praying for you, Jimmy. Did you get... <laughs> no, we, we're going to be praying for them. We, they're going to get our oil. Our Because she needs... You're getting... You getting you're getting that dope today, yeah. right? So, thank you. But we've been praying for each one of you. Jimmy, you've really been on a prayer request because we know you're going through a lot of health stuff. Okay? I can see the Holy Spirit working in you right now, brother. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder how obedient you are for the Lord. Amen. I sure am glad you're here today because God's getting ready to do something for you. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, all you on the back, with, let's ask God blessing. Uh, then we're going to pray. Okay. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for the chance to pray for these as that altar. <clears throat> May the movement of your Holy Spirit take control in Jesus' name. Okay, all you on the back, I want you to have a chance to, to reach forward. And touch somebody up in front of you. And then, as you have, uh, as you have touched somebody, if you, then you sort of make it a link. All right. So you're all connected. There's a power in, in a connection. That even though, I, like, I got my hand here on Jimmy, but it's the same as I'm, I'm reaching all the way over here and I'm making uh, contact over here with Miss Judy. Cause we're all linked together. Is everybody touching somebody? Heavenly Father, now you, I want you guys to be able to pray. So you guys pray to Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. 
Lord God, as we've got these five that come forward for anointing, Father God, that your Bible said, Father, if there's any sick among you, to call upon the elders of the church. Father God, and if they come forward, Lord, that we'll anoint them with oil. Father God, in the name of the Lord, and Father God, if they've committed any sin, they'll, they'll uh, be forgiven. That you said, Father God, that they'll be healed. Father God, you said, according to the word of God, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father God, as I lift up these before you on this altar, Father God, I come over here and I pray for Miss, Miss Sylvia, Lord. You know her body. You know her back. You know the different issues that she's going through in her life. I pray, Father God, you would just anoint her. And Lord, we know it's difficult to stand up for a long period of time. So I pray, Father, for her back and her body, that you would touch her spine. Father God, that you would ease, just ease the pain and the discomfort that she feels. <clears throat> Father God, to be powerful and empowered and blessed in your name. Father God, help her, Father God, to overcome uh, things that are hindrances in her life. That, Father God, she can find herself drawn even closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I lift up Brother Jimmy before you. If you, Jimmy, if you put your hands up here on my shoulder right here. I don't know if that's hard for you, but I'm going to do this to squat down a little bit. Father God, I lift up Brother Jimmy before you. Father God, and uh, reports tell me about fluids. Reports tell me just about his health. But Father God, you're the God that knows him from head to toe, from fingertip to fingertip. I lift him up before you, Father God. I thank you for his obedience to be here in the house of God. Father God, he didn't know he was going to come up to this altar. But Lord, you knew. You knew, Father God, what he was going to need in his life. And Father God, I pray for a special touch on his body. Father God, all of us can come before you and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and help me be the man that you want me to be. And if you're a woman, to help me be the woman you want me to be. But Lord, you'll make this man empowered, Father God, to go out and be able to preach and teach and, and, and proclaim the name of Jesus. Father God, that you'll give him the health and strength and the air and the, the endurance. I pray, Father God, for his body, Lord Jesus, to be the, the, the water weight that is the, the fluid build up. Father God, that it will be begin to dissipate the, and his body will be at the, the right fluid levels of what it's supposed to be. And Father God, you'll give these doctors the wisdom of how to help get help guide him to the help that you want him to have. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, Father God, that you would minister to him in a mighty way. Father God, that you would find yourself in, he would find you in him. Father God, even more. And you would bless his wife, Lord God, of, of, of Miss Barbara. Father God, to help her be the woman of God and to be an encouragement, Lord God, that you want her to be in his family. And may you just help them, Father God, to be the, the, the example for others, Lord, in Jesus' name and their family, that they would know Jesus as their Savior and be able to get in the house of God to hear the word of God and to be encouraged. Now, Father God, in Jesus' name, I speak a blessing over Jimmy. And Father God, may you find himself walking stronger in health. Lord God, I lift up Willie before you, Lord. You know the different health things that he's going through from his back issues and different things that he's been, uh, uh, that I don't even know about, but you know the different diagnoses that he's had from the doctor. So Lord, I pray, Father God, for him as a man of God. Thank you for using him to encourage me as a pastor. Father God, may me as a pastor, Lord, speak unto him the blessings of the Lord. That Father God, may he find himself, Lord, being strengthened. Father God, that he can find himself in health and strength and, and healing. In Jesus' name, may you bless this man. In Jesus' name, Father. Lord, I pray, Father God, for Miss Millie. Lord God, who, who's always willing to say he needs it more than I do. But Father God, I lift her up before you. You know her stomach issues. You know her, her different uh, uh, things that the doctors talk about, blood sugar levels, and different things that the, the doctor has mentioned that she's talked to me about. Lord, even the things that she hasn't spoken to me. But Lord, you do know her also from head to toe, from fingertip to fingertip. And I pray for the indwelling and the infilling of your Holy Spirit to be upon her. Father God, to help her be strengthened and healed in Jesus' name. Father God, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Of every month. Lord, you say in your word, where two shall agree touching any one thing, it shall be done. In Jesus' name. Lord God, I lift up Brother Eugene. Father God, we know, Lord God, this man comes to this altar and he says, I'm determined I'm going to be healed. Father God, in Jesus' name, I speak a blessing over him. Father God, may the circulation, his blood circulation, go to what all areas that it's supposed to go to. Lord God, may you touch his lungs, that his lungs uh, will transfer the oxygen that it gets from the blood. And Father God, may your blood just, uh, then may your blood be a covering over him. Father God, to strengthen him, to empower him, to love him, to heal him. 
Father God, that we know, Lord, that all things are possible, well, Father God, for those that believe. And Lord, we know, Lord, that we strive to believe. We're trying to follow the manual. Father God, we're trying to follow your direction and your guidance. And Father God, we as a church, we anoint each one of these at this altar. Father God, that they be healed in Jesus' name. Father God, and that not only that, but that you'll receive the praise, the honor, and the glory. And each one will find themselves <laughs> even more committed to one another and committed to this church and committed for the cause of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because we want to see others know Jesus as their Savior. <laughs> that, Lord, you're going to heal these. You're going to lift them up. You're going to empower them. And Father God, that they'll be able to be a testimony for others to call upon you. Lord God, may I be careful as a pastor. Father God, be careful as a preacher. But, Father God, as I'm also uh, trying to be careful, I'm also going to be bold enough to call out your word. Father God, you're the healer. You're the deliverer. I'm just a preacher. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I want each one of you to, to realize and, and take the spoken words that I spoke over each one of you and apply it to your life. All right? And use it and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, when you leave these doors today, say, God's making a difference. God's taking me closer. God is taking me and strengthening me. He's healing me. He's doing something for me that I couldn't do on my own. God is moving in my life. you you got to keep saying that because the first thing the devil is going to tell you when you get to that car is that that didn't mean nothing. It's just a cigarette. Amen. The first thing the doctor, the devil is going to do is say that. Amen. That it didn't mean anything. But I want to tell you, listen to this. What I'm going to tell you, God's anointed me to be your pastor. God anointed me to speak the word of the word of God over each one of you. Amen. Apply it. Amen. And I can tell the Jimmy, I can tell the Holy Spirit dealing with you. You haven't taken Amen. your eyes off of me. You sit here, you like you soak you in just like a sponge. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna see some great things happening in your life, brother. Amen. I can I can tell it. Amen. You hang in there. Amen. But look, God bless each one of you. Yeah. On that, Brother Greg, I'll let you dismiss us in prayer and ask God to protect us as we go our separate ways. Hey, let's hold hands, all of us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to you for you, Lord, in prayer. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to just share the grace of God with these people. Lord, just be with us and guide us. Keep us safe to our next point in time to gather together, Lord. And if we leave, Lord, just be with us and guide us and, and get us to the journey where we're looking for, Lord, yes. to be with you. Just be guiding us and give us protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We had a hug Amen. 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 before you leave out of here. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. God bless you. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. We've had a good day.